Hey guys, we're gonna do our next section, which is piecewise functions. I would like to apologize right now. My nose is running, so if I do some sniffles, sorry. So piecewise functions. Well, remember a function means that for every x, there's only one y, right? So I wanna go back and I'm gonna show you piecewise means that you have tons of functions in pieces. So like this is a piecewise function and actually there's tons of functions here. So this isn't an absolute value here because they're not at the same slope. So this is a linear <coughs> from here to here, another linear from here to here, constant from here to here, some sort of parabola it looks like, could be um, maybe even cubic from here to here, another parabola, parabola, and constant. So see, it's pieces of multiple functions put together. So sometimes we can picture it, but it's better for us to put it all together. So here's how our function is going to be given to us. We're gonna look at our pieces. So here I have a two X, which is linear, right? And an X plus one, which is also linear. But the specific thing about this, the 2x, that 2x line, I only want it where x is less than 3, okay? Now, where x equals 3 and is greater than 3, that's where we want our x plus 1. So how do we graph that? Some graphing, graphings are easier to do than others. So I'm going to start with a strategy that will work all the time. So what I'll do is I'll take my first function here. And I'll put 2x just so I remember what function I'm doing. And I'll put my x and y. Now, I want x is less than 3. So I could do uh, 0, 1, 2. And you know what? Even though I don't want 3 in there, I'm going to include it just so I know where it goes to. Because think of this. This would be an open circle, right? We don't know if it's going to connect or not. It doesn't have to. Okay. So now I'm going to plug in. Two times zero is zero. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. And three times two is six. Okay. So this is going to be my first one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these points. Zero, zero. One, two, two, four, three, six. Now at three, six, I'm going to have an open circle. The other thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this in color so that way you guys can see uh, the difference, is don't forget it's less than three. So that means it continues going to the left. Okay, and I'm using a ruler just so I can get it more accurate here. There we go. And it stops right here. It's open because it's not equal to. Now I'm going to do the next function. I'm going to do this x plus 1. All right. So we're going to start at 3 because I want 3 or greater. So let's do 3, 4, 5. Luckily for us, linear, um, you only have to do a couple points so you can see if it's straight or not, if you messed up. So three plus one is four, four plus one is five, and five plus one is six. So at one, two, three, I'm at one, two, three, four, and it's solid because it's equal to, at four, I'm at five, let's see, one, one two, three, four, five, a five, I'm at six. All right, let's see if I can use a different color so you guys can see. Let me use black. And of course, this continues going all the way to the right. So I'm going to have an arrow right there. And this is a solid dot. Okay. Now, I know it's tempting, though, with a ruler to keep going this way. But if we kept going, it would no longer be a function. And not to mention, we would be less than 3 for that one, right? Now, what does this mean? f of 5. Usually, we see this with f of x, right? So what it's pertaining to is that it's saying, 
what value is this function at if x were five? So in this, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And then I see that at five, I'm at the value of six. Is there another way that we can do this? Yes. Five. Well, which one of these functions would the five go? Well, five is greater than three. So it's at this bottom function right here. So that means I have to plug in five to that bottom function, and that gives us our value. Of course, if we plugged it into the top, we would get a different value. But we don't care about the top because it's only less than three. Five is greater than three. A couple ways to do that. Okay, let's try another one. So on this one down here, we have a linear and we have a quadratic there. We have that parabola. So the good thing is here, we also stop at negative three and only go to one. So let me make my table. X and Y. So I'm going to negative three. Now, do I have to do negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, blah, blah, blah? No, I don't. This is linear, so it should all be the same slope. So I might go negative one, zero, and one. You could do all the points if you wanted. And then let me plug it in. Negative three times negative two is six. Six plus one is seven. Negative one times negative two is two. Two plus one is three. Zero times negative two is zero, it's one. And then one times negative two is negative two, negative two plus one is negative one. Okay, so I can graph this. So negative three, one, two, three, I go to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, this is gonna be filled in because it's equal to, okay? And this one here is gonna be open. So negative one, we have one, two, three. Zero, we have one. And one, we have negative one. Okay, and it's only from here to here. Now what I'm going to do, though, is erase that negative one there because that needs to be an open circle. Let's make that a little bit better. Okay. Over. Remember, I stop at that end point there, no arrows, and then I go to that open circle. And there we go. And that first one. Now let's do that quadratic. Now the quadratic here is greater than one. So I need to start at one, and that's going to be filled in. So maybe I'll do two and three. So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. So at one, we have one and it's filled in. At two, we're at one, two, three, four. And at three, we're at nine. Now what's funny about this is it almost looks linear, but it's not. So we can't use my ruler, but what I am going to do is start at the one, remember it's filled in, and I'm going to kind of curve it and add my arrow. Okay. So you got to think about the function or the piece of the function that you are looking at. Because from far away, this almost doesn't look quadratic, but it is, that piece of it is. All right, f of zero. We're going to do this the algebraic way now, okay? So f of zero, so x is zero. In which of these functions would we include x equal to zero? Well, zero is not greater than one. Sorry, guys, my lights went out. So we have the top function. So if we plug in zero there, we get negative two times zero plus one. And what do we get? We get the value of All right, so that is how we graph piecewise functions. If you are in secondary three regulars, that's all you're going to do. You're just going to go on and graph 
piecewise function. But if you're in honors, we're going to continue. And we're going to actually, never mind, regulars, we're going to graph them more. And then example four. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Need to look ahead sometimes, huh? All right, here we got a cubic. And remember, a cubic's kind of that snake, right? And then we have a linear. So x cubed. So we're going to go from negative to the one. Now, because this is not linear, I'm going to include all those points that I want to. So negative two, negative one, zero, and one. And at one, it is open, right? At negative two, it's filled in. All right, negative two cubed is negative eight. Negative one cubed is negative one. Zero is zero, and one is one. So negative two, negative eight, and that's filled in. That's equal to negative one, negative one, zero, zero, and one, one. Now don't forget that's open. Again, I'm not going to use my ruler because this is not linear. So, and it stops at that two, at the negative two. So I can't draw an arrow onto it. Next one, three X plus two. So X, Y, start at one, two, three, and four. And this is filled in and we stopped, right? So you gotta be conscious of that ahead of time if there's an arrow or not. All right, plug in one, we get five. Plug in two, six, and eight. Plug in three, we get 11. And four, we get 14. So this is gonna go off of our graph, okay? Sorry, guys. Okay. So at one, it's five. One, two, three, four, five, and it's filled in. And then at two, it's eight. At three, it's 11. And at four, it's 14. I'm trying to make this as linear as I can because it stops at four. So I'm going to draw this line. I don't go past it. You guys have to make that decision ahead of time. So you do not draw arrows or go past it. Okay. Then I'm going to make those endpoints so we know. Um, all right. So I'm going to show you this algebraically again. Okay. Now, we're wondering where x is is one, and then we're gonna find out what y is. So here's the tricky part, right? They both have one in it, but only one includes one. Which one includes x equals one? Right down here. So that's the one we're plugging into. So it's three times one plus two, which is five. So that f of a number does evaluate. This is where we're going to break off our regulars from our honors. So regulars, you can get to work and graph those piecewise. Honors, we're going to work backwards. As you can see, we have the graph. What we need to do is make the functions, OK? So this is how I want you to start it. First of all, we have f of x equals and then we'll do our E bracket. I'm making it super big right now because there are three functions in this case, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do first is actually put the endpoints. I'm going to do these inequalities of what sections it is in first. So as you can see, I go to negative infinity to X equals negative one. So that means X is a less than and it's filled in so that's negative one. That first function goes from negative infinity to negative one. That second function starts at one. Now it's 
open, so it's not equal to, and then it goes all the way to x equals one. Sorry, this is negative one. Our third function here starts at one and goes to infinity, right? So that means x is greater than, and it's filled in, equal to one. Okay, so those are our three sections. Now what we need to do is find the equation or the function of those three sections. So sometimes this will be more, a little bit easier than others, okay? So think of this, so this is linear, and how do we make a linear equation? Slope and y-intercept. Well, as you can see, the slope is one, right? One over one. So we have one x. And then we add our y-intercept in, which in this case would be two. And again, the reason why I found that is because if I extended it, then I would know that line crossed at two for the y-axis. All right, let's look at this one. Again, linear. So rise over run is one. And then our y-intercept is one, two, three. And then this one right here, rise over run. We have one again. This time, if I extended this out, our y-intercept would be at one. And this is how to go backwards. Now, sometimes it's going to be a little bit more complicated, and I'll show you the next one what that might entail. Remember, we're going to start with our f of x. We have three sections again. Okay, so that first section is going from negative infinity to negative two. Do you guys see that? To negative two. So x is less than negative two. Now the question is, is it filled in? Yes, it is. Okay, the second section goes from negative two goes all the way to, see that there, two. Now, I know this is filled in two, and this is where you, the computer program should not mark you wrong. If you put equal to or not equal to there, it should be fine because you already had it equal to there. It just happened to be that these pieces connect. So like, since I'm not putting an equal to sign right there, um, I'm going to put one down here, and that goes from two to infinity, so that's x is greater than or equal to two. All right, so let's make our function, and then we're done. So if I look here, our slope is three, right? I'm rising three over one, so that's three x. Now, what do I do, though, because of the y-intercept, right? Well, you could plug in a point if you wanted to. So I know it's three X plus some Y intercept equals our Y. So why don't we do that? Why don't we plug in a point? Let's plug in this point right here. That point is negative four, negative two. So if I plug in negative four here, plus what is negative two? So that would be negative 12 plus what equals negative two. Well, let's see, if I add that on the other side. Oh my gosh, I'm just looking at something because I don't like that it's 10. Three, three, one, two, three, four, four, negative two. Why is that working? Hopefully somebody can correct me here of what I'm doing wrong. 
because watch because if we kept going right one two three over one one two three over one right that's 10 11 12 10 11 12 13 why is that wrong guys sorry i'm i need a moment to think what is going on here one two three negative three one oh that should be negative two plus one. Oh no it is ten I just don't know why it's not coming out correctly. All right, and I can check. So just solving this correctly will give me 10 there. And again, I can check on things and say, let me do negative two. Um, that's six, and that gives me four. So that works. Okay. Uh, this one's constant, so this one's a little bit easier. So one, two, three, four. So it's just at four. There is no X with this because otherwise it will create a slope. So this is horizontal. It's horizontal at four. And then let's go this way and we get a negative three for our slope. Okay, let me trust my mathematics this time. Uh, let's do this one. Let's three, one. So negative three times three plus what? is one. So negative nine plus what is one? Well, that is 10 again. And we are all done. So be careful going backwards. It's going to be a little bit harder. And that's why this is an honors topic. Hello.